What's up, guys? We're back with another episode of Armchair Coaches, but this week we're going to be talking about the sport of baseball. We have our mullet-haired friend down in Tennessee, Jacob. He's our Southern correspondent. He talks about baseball. He's going to talk about some of the bullshit going on and some of the pitchers that have been absolutely throwing filth and why they've been throwing such filth. There's a reason there's been so many no-hitters, and Jacob's going to get into it. All right, guys. I hope everyone everyone's having a great day so far. Um, So earlier this week, you had the first instance that I can remember this season of a pitcher being asked to remove a piece of equipment from themselves. Uh, it was Giovanni Gallegos, a uh, relief pitcher for the St. Louis Cardinals, came in in the bottom of the seventh. Uh, really, it was the most pivotal part of this game for the Chicago White Sox. Uh, the Cardinals were up, and it was really one of the few times that the White Sox had any opportunity at all of getting within striking distance of the Cardinals to make this a closer game. Um, Giovanni came out uh, from the bullpen, and before he even threw a pitch, the pit, uh, home, uh, the crew chief, Joe West, immediately asked him to remove his cap, remove his cap. They and get a new ball cap. Hat. Um, took his fucking hat. Uh, fucking hat, dude. And what's crazy is, is that every baseball game I watch, I've got the uh, Yankees-Tigers on right now. Actually, it's an extra innings. Um, but every pitcher that I see that comes onto the fucking mound on the brim of their baseball hat, there is this like light gray white substance on there. Now, most of the time, what that is from what I've heard is a combination of rosin and water. Now, rosin is completely legal within the game of baseball. You actually, it's that white bag on the bump or the back of the pitcher's mound in every game. Every pitcher has their own bag now because of COVID, dries the hands out, helps a little bit out with grip. Now, what baseball is trying to get out of and what's been highlighted here recently, especially uh, because of all, because of the character that is Trevor Bauer, is foreign yeah. substances, dude. Um, back in 2018, he started talking about pine tar and other substances pitchers are using in order to get um, more RPM rev, uh, revolutions per minute on the baseball. So, for what people that don't know what that does to a ball, the more spin you have on a baseball, the more filthy that pitch is going gonna, is, is gonna to be. Whether it's an off-spin like pitch, insane, like a right? slider or a curveball, um, it's going to have more break to it. Whether it's horizontal or straight north-south break. Um, on a fastball, it's going to give what people call more life on the ball. So, that four-seam fastball is coming at you straight. But it's going to creep up on you a little bit more. Um, and with like sliders, obviously, it's going to have more horizontal break and everything like that. So You could throw just absolute filth that way. You're basically manipulating the baseball. Exactly. And, that, and see, that is you are not allowed to doctor the baseball per the MLB handbook rule 3.07. I'm 90% sure I got that one right. Um, but you're not allowed to doctor that, man. Um, there are specific guidelines in there. Um, if a pitcher has their foot on the rubber on the mound, uh, they're not able to lick their go like that for the ball or anything like that. You're not able to scuff that ball up or anything. Um, you're not able, you're not allowed to uh, intentionally, keyword there, intentionally doctor that ball with any foreign substance. Most of the time it's pine tar. Um, but what's been going on more and more is that there's some kooky scientist shit going on. Um, and guys, some guys, it, it basically, it's coming down to when those pitchers release the ball, you can all, it, there's been reports of guys saying that you can almost hear that ball, like their fingers stick off that ball, ball. ripping it <laughs> off, dude, from the dugout as they're throwing it to home plate. Um, like fucking Velcro. <laughs> like fucking, exactly, man, exactly. And, uh, <laughs> dude. So, bro, if the batter can hear that, it's a freaking issue, bro. It's a real issue. And um, there was a great article earlier this week written by uh, Britt Giro uh, Giroli and Ken Rosenthal. They both write for The Athletic. Um, and it was one of the first times that there's been real names put onto this reporting. Um, yeah. Specifically, the most important name that came out of that article is one of the premier catchers in baseball right now, Phillies catcher JT Real Muto. Um, 
the reason why it's so important that a catcher is coming out about this is because catcher's position is very intricate when it comes to how teams build their offense. Um, catcher is not a premium offensive position. When you draft a catcher, when you build a catcher up, and you have one that is going to be your everyday MLB starter, his primary goal is to be defense first. You want him calling the best possible game th that he can. When guys are throwing no-nos and, per and like perfect hitter, like perfect games, no one touches a fucking base, whether they're hit by a pitch, walk, no hits, no fucking nothing. No, no. errors, yeah. nothing. No. That, a lot of that's on that, the catcher. Exactly, man, because they are calling that game. That is their responsibility to keep in check not only the starting pitcher, not only the you know those five starting pitchers you have and whoever comes up and down throughout midseason callouts, but you got to think, man, they're also dealing with every fucking single relief pitcher too. Exactly. So that's why it was so important that JT Real Muto came out and made the state some of the statements that he did, saying that it's just fu it's fucking ridiculous. Is what the basis yeah. of what he was saying is. It's not fair what's going on. What a lot of these guys on the mound are doing right now. Sorry, man. Yankees just scored. Fuck. Fuck. Yeah. Uh, uh, great. Hey. Yankees scored. Yeah, dude. Two one. Top of the tenth, man. Hey, this is great. This is great podcasting right now. <laughs> I'm a Tigers fan, so this is <laughs> Don't worry, you still got time. They suck, dude. No, we don't. <laughs> Give no, them five years. Give them five years, man. Five years, I'm telling you. But The farm. So, I mean, JT coming out and speaking up about this is huge. Because most of the time, on an issue like this, the catcher is going to stick with the pitchers. Because it's yeah. so important that they, they still have that relationship. Because on the mound, man, you see guys in a the game, they'll shake them off. Like, no, dude, I don't want to throw that. Yeah. Some guys can get away with that shit. A guy like Max Scherzer, he's like, I want to throw a fucking fastball. He's going to throw that fucking fastball. He's going to get it out because he's a fucking established ace in this league. But yeah. younger guys that are trying to throw this filthy shit, no, 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 man. I want to throw this. I want to throw that. Catch like, all right, dude, it's your fucking record. It's whatever you want to do with your fucking stats at that point. Yeah. So that's why it's so important that JT came out and said something like that. Because he's an established vet in this game that is a perennial all-star. Mm -hmm. He's a gold... I, ooh, I might be walking out on a limb there. Pretty sure he's a gold glove winner behind the plate. But that just shows you how bad the sticky issue is getting right now yeah. in baseball. Right now in baseball. Yeah. Like, if it, the catcher has to come out to talk about the pitcher, like, who is literally, like, his number one... Like, you're, it's a partnership... And you have to basically out it. Like, every pitcher in that dugout is like, yo, what are you doing? Or or he's addressed this and been like, don't throw that shit. Don't throw that shit. I don't want pine tar on my glove. I don't want what the sunscreen on my glove. I don't want any of that shit on my glove. We're not going to play that way. So unless he's either done that or he's fed up, like really fed up, he wouldn't say anything. Exactly. And, like, there are workarounds around getting fucking pine tar in your glove and shit like that in order to kind of grab into the glove itself get some of that sticky icky icky on your fingers bro yeah you got the fucking you got guys going to the fucking belt when next time you watch a baseball game dude watch a pitcher watch him fucking adjust those pants a little bit dig that just thumb. his gooch dude dig that thumb right underneath that fucking belt bro i guarantee you he's trying to rub something on that thumb Give that little fucking little bit more action, bro. A little bit more action. Just downward got fucking action, sunscreen on his dick, like. bro. And like, here's here's the crazy thing is, is that even even a substance like sunscreen, that can yeah. help that can with the grip. With the grip. But yeah. the guy, the, the league isn't shouldn't be worried about sunscreen because yeah, it has a small effect on the ball. But the overall effect, the what the reason why we are seeing such filthy shit right. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Pitchers, there's more science behind pitching. You're talking about arm slot angles. You're talking about a whole lot of different shit, release points. But the science behind pitching is so good and so accurate right now that they, that with pine tar, with spider tack, they're, all they're trying to do is unnaturally increase the spin rate on baseballs. And yeah, makes it hard to hit. Exactly. And here's here's a different aspect of this that um, 
I'm sure will start getting talked about when the league starts coming down with some of this shit. You heard about this aspect when the Astros, when the whole Astros sign stealing scandal came out in 2020, yeah. that they were stealing signs all throughout 2017 and 2018. Um, if you look at a direct correlation between some of those minor league pitchers that caught, got called up between 2017 and 2018 against the Astros, got called up, got fucking wailed against by those guys because they were actively in live time stealing signs, they would get wailed against the Astros, get sent back down to the minors, and then never see a major league game again. Yeah. Like, and that and affected that, their life. Dude, that is what they have worked towards their entire life, like you just said, man. And to be able to reach that point and get that opportunity ripped away from you because guys are stealing signs is unbelievable. I'd be pretty pissed, it, it's, I'd be pretty pissed if I found out after this and I knew I played them and had a shit game against them. I'd be furious. Exactly. Now, look at it in this in this scenario when we're talking about pitchers using bullshit substances on balls in order to get filthy yeah. fucking break. You got uh -huh. a, you got a guy who got called up because maybe someone went on the IL, all right? He's yeah. a, a a French guy or maybe he's even a guy that's projected to be uh, an average yeah. major league baseball player. Um Absolutely. You fucking put him in against multiple pitchers over a week, 2 weeks or something like that. And he cannot get solid fucking bat. He cannot barrel a fucking ball up to save his life because guys are fucking doctoring the shit out of these balls. Like, there's an, mm -hmm. opportunity, like, there's an opportunity that because a guy is going up against pitchers, against pitchers who are cheating. Who are cheating. That's what this yeah, is. It's this, straight cheating. This is cheating. cheating. All right? It's, you're All right. doctoring the way you throw baseball. Exactly. It is against the rules and regulations of Major League Baseball. This is 100% cheating. And I'm saying that as a guy, dude, there are videos of Garrett Cole. I have his jersey. He is a New York Yankee. If someone starts badmouthing Garrett Cole over some no 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 no, I'm like, look, man, he's top he's top two, top three pitcher in the league right now. But there is yeah. there, but there's there videos there's of him, videos man, of him, man, using the sticky, using shit. The sticky shit. There's like, text yeah, messages bro. asking other clubhouse attendants to build concoctions out of things like. Coca-Cola, boiled Coca-Cola. Yeah, because it's sticky sugar. Sticky sugar, man. This is how, like, this is what's happening right now. And, you know, Major League Baseball, I guess, I don't know. I don't have too much faith in the league office because they completely dropped the ball last year when it came to returning to the field for COVID. Base, but Major League yeah. Baseball had a huge opportunity, massive opportunity to grow their audience in a way that they could never have imagined. Um, but before this season, they stated they're going to start taking balls, uh, use baseballs out of games from the pitchers, um, and send them to labs and everything like that to invest. I'm going to take their word for it that that's what they're doing. Um, yeah. but I can almost guarantee you, I, I really doubt that there's going to be any sort of punishment put down this year against any guys, any unless guys, it is just blatantly just obvious. That they have Some guy just walks out there with a piece of sandpaper and just starts fucking. Exactly, and I gotta I gotta throw another former Yankee underneath the bus here, but uh, uh, Pineda got caught with pine tar all over his neck, bro, all over. I mean, the umps came up, they touched his neck, like, dude, you got to get out of here. Ejected him, automatic ten game suspension suspension for doing that shit. Yeah. Um, you know, and it's getting to the point now where if you watch a game, you are seeing guys dig into their gloves, really touch touch their hats, where a lot of guys keep some of that stuff at. Um, mm -hmm. Dude, it's just blatantly, blatantly it's obvious what's going on right now. It's, and it's, yeah, it's straight cheating. Exactly. And what Mike Schilt, um, what Mike Schilt said in his uh, post game presser after he was ejected for the whole Giovanni thing with Joe West and everything like that, um, it's baseball's worst kept secret. It's, yeah, it's, it, it's, everyone knows. Exactly. It's reminiscent of steroid era. Everyone knew everyone was juicing. All the batters were juicing, man. You could look knows. at the physiques and see what was going on. You could see how hard these Yeah, bro. Barry Bond puts on 60 pounds. You're like, okay, bro. He should still be in the Hall of Fame, though. I don't give a shit what anyone says, man. It is extremely hard to hit a baseball. Dude was just hitting them really far. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> 
<laughs> right. Like, all right. All right, guys. Well, hey, look, like, honestly, we're going to kind of see what, you know, MLB does coming, you know, this uh, uh, next few days, honestly. Um, but for the most part, Jacob, is there anything I know you wanted to talk about? Maybe some of the games coming up this week? Um, yeah, big series coming up uh, starting May 31st. It's a four game series. Um, I'm not saying this because I'm a homer for the New York Yankees. This is a big series for the American League East. Uh, right now, it is very tight. Um, Yankees Rays, four game series in the Bronx. There is bad blood between these teams, man. I am telling you, there is no love lost between Kevin Cash, manager of the Rays, and Aaron Boone, manager of the New York Yankees. There is no love lost. These teams hate each other, and it has, through the years, has always been kind of a David versus Goliath thing. New York Yankees, man. Um, yeah. uh, known, known world-renowned baseball world team. Renowned. Everyone knows them. Yeah. Everyone they knows. have the payroll. They got the players. They got the names. You name it. Um, the Tampa Bay Rays are a baseball team in a retirement community. <laughs> like, there's no yeah, way literally. to get around that. Um, exactly. Um, small market team, but they are very smart with how they handle their ball club. Very analytical dude. Tampa Bay probably has one of the best scouting and analytics departments in baseball. Um, I mean, you saw that last year when they made, you know, they lost to the Los Angeles Dodgers in the World Series last year. Um, but you saw that with some of the pickups they made um, and have continued to make and some of the trades they have. Um, and to be honest with you, man, Tampa Bay is going to be a really exciting team this year. They have uh, one of the top prospects in the league, uh, hopefully coming up soon, and Wander Franco, Wander Kid at shortstop. Uh he is he's the complete package, man, as far as defensively and offensively. He's got great speed to go with it. I'm really excited to see him hit the field. Um, I just hope the Yankees bust their ass every time they see him play. Um, but, yeah, man, that is the series to watch, in my opinion, this upcoming week. And it's a good way to start off your week um, after having a good time on Memorial Day weekend. Facts. All right, guys. Well, we'll see you next week, and you will see Jacob next Friday. Uh, thank you for coming to our episode. Dude, I appreciate it, man. Thank you. Thank you.